Um, good morning, Henrik. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> it's, five o'clock. it's five o'clock cocktail time. Cocktails time, huh? It's actually, um, as, I, as I told you, it's, uh, it's, we have been talking about different dates when we could manage to do it. And we agreed on this day, but today is actually the company's, uh, we were trying to have a little goodbye Christmas dinner. Not, yeah, and the Christmas dinner became a Christmas drink. So here, um, just an hour ago, we had a glass of wine. Nice, nice. Oh, so I really- stay focus. Nice. Feeling really good for this talk. <laughs> so today's the last day of the year there in the studio. Are you calling us from the studio in Copenhagen? Yeah, we in the studio. Uh, we we um, we sadly have to come back uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday to fix out. Uh, we working on um, some different projects that needs to be uh, finished by um, yeah early January, mm-hmm. uh, and then early January we have to. After those projects, we have to uh, get uh, ready for presentation, a film, a show, something for Paris Fashion Week. And uh, we are in this pandemic, COVID-19. (laughs) And can we do it? Can we not? Can we film anything? Can we be 10 people together? Can we be 50 people together for doing this film? That's a little bit unclear. So we keep all doors open. Okay, cool, cool. We have to see how it, um, how it is after the new year. Maybe it's better, maybe it's worse. Yeah, I mean, you've been so dynamic even uh, given the, the pandemic. Maybe we could start with just a, a quick understanding of your studio structure. I mean, who's, how are you working? Um, what's the team uh, made up, make up like? Um, um, you- yeah, we, um, uh, we, we have kind of three small departments we call it uh, three different tables big tables and i'm sitting at table three normally uh, that's together with some architects and product designers and stuff and we sit mostly work on other projects exhibitions uh, architecture art playgrounds we're working on now set designs uh, costumes for ballets and stuff and then the tech uh, it's everything is just happening in this long row somehow we have a pretty big studio but somehow everybody compress and sit very close together <laughs> Which we, we shouldn't but that's uh, it's weird how the human mind kind of um, want to be close to each other even that we could sit very we could sit with 10 meters uh, right. in distance, but uh but uh, table two is more uh, logistic, uh, designing, mm-hmm. uh, more on the clothing part. And table one uh, is more uh, production, uh, logistic, administration, uh, more mm-hmm. technical designing and stuff like that. But How big are these tables? Huh? How big are these tables? Uh, the tables are like, I don't know, three meters long. And then people sit on, uh, and two meters wide and people sit on... We are at the moment around kind of 15 people here, um, a little bit less up and down towards uh, how the world is uh, going, you know, uh, yeah. and um, yeah. Well, uh, before, we, before we get into the images and everything, I guess we should, you know, we should say that it's been described that you're like an artist who has chosen, who's chosen to work in fashion. Um, so that your 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 studio is now a kind of creative studio, and you're doing all kinds of different projects, right? I mean, you you're besides uh, you know your own personal artwork, you've also been a drummer um, for the band Trent Muller, is that right? Yes. And and on top of that, you're now doing um, everything from fashion to the runway shows to films to architecture and interiors proposals as well. I kind of try to keep my mind busy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, I, I at the age of ten, I got a drum kit by my my brother. I think he his plan was that uh, my big sister, my big brother, and I we could have a band together mm. because my sister was pretty good at singing, but she didn't really want to join. Um, <laughs> but um, so I actually been playing drums for quite some years, like thirty seven years now. Wow. Um, 
and uh, that was kind of my introduction to to something else than uh, mathematic and language uh-huh. and grammatic um so um and from there i kind of took off in all kind of directions because i also realized uh, because i played music 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 and that was that was uh, a way of finding some kind of a little bit uh, i was super shy and uh, found a little bit self confidence in in music huh. and um like when I was 13, we played a radio concert with the little band we had. Oh, wow. Is this we were... your family band or you formed it? No, a... that was uh, just uh, became okay. bands of uh, friends from school. Uh, we played uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, some Prince stuff and some darker stuff. Um, and slowly it became darker and darker. And... Um, uh, in the beginning, more Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, a little bit, um, you could say, a wider perspective, and then a little bit more narrow yeah. uh, into very British-based music. Uh, in the beginning, when I was maybe 15, it was more The Cure, and then a little bit more into The Smiths, and then slowly from there into very uh, independent uh, snoogazer uh, music. This is like late, late 80s, I suppose, right? Uh, from, uh, yeah into the 90s and so i know i know that you um you grew up on a farm and uh and i believe your father was a, a pig farmer is that correct uh my grandma had a pig farm uh, my dad was the only um, of the brothers who actually um kind of uh, you could say had a uh, he had an education in uh, as a nurse mm. Um, and worked on a mental hospital. My mom was an X-ray nurse, and they met at choir, uh, a singing, a singing nurse choir. Um, um, so I'm, I'm wondering. I guess I mentioned that only because I'm wondering, from such rural roots, where you first encountered fashion, and and how fashion kind of came into the picture. I think actually through the music there, because when when it went a bit, you know, suddenly uh, I could I noticed that those uh, social circles that I was a part of were dressed in a certain way. There was certain codes of uh, what films to see, what music to listen to, to and it was pretty dark, and uh, everybody was dressed in black and black pointy shoes and. <laughs> and um, and there was some kind of about the identity of the whole music thing. Yeah. And suddenly uh, I went uh, more wilder into, you could say a more techno world in the later 90s, uh, mid 90s. And I uh, started dressing, I think, with fashion and starting becoming very interested in the fashion thing. And I started sewing a few things myself out of some weird materials like a leftover like a water bay uh, the skin from a water bed that was oh. in a silver uh and i had a uh, furry shoes and i was starting uh going in in skirts uh and uh, had bed sheets covering me and i went outside <laughs> and very flowery uh, pajamas to to now you know i i kind of dressed down with the over this so i i guess um I'm, I'm wondering is there something that you felt you were rebelling from in terms yeah, of I think the, it, uh, the fashion at the time i think with the fashion when i started getting into it and and and, and i got it into it because of a girl uh and 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 by a mistake um i was uh, supposed to apply for foundation for architecture and uh and graphic and art, uh, there was this foundation school and it was completely full. Uh, there was a waiting list and uh, um, I called my mom and said, hey, it's not gonna happen. It starts in five days and they still have a waiting list. And she was like, ah, oh, but your cousin, my cousin Rege, Rege Vipskov, she, <laughs> uh, she got in on a school and they had tons, there were a lot of space there. But it was a school for foundation school for theater, and I was very shy. Okay. And music, and at that time I already played music for what thirteen years, so it was a bit boring. 
and then they had a design. So I'm like, hey, I take design and I started two days after. And that was a foundation course in mostly focused on fashion designs. So it was me and 20 girls. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was not really interested in applying on any academies or anything. I was just more there. Uh, I've, been, I've been unemployed uh, and playing music for a while. So I was just, uh, you could say, doing experiments. Um, and then one of the teachers came uh, in the end of the course it was like a half year course said like hey you should really apply think about it I was like no no I'm gonna move to the big capital and be a musician I was like oh you should think about it and then I came to I joined a band um, in Copenhagen from the countryside and everything was good we were playing festivals and stuff but then I was kind of missing something still because that's that was kind of one way of ex expressing yourself. I was missing a bit the more, you could say, uh, the um, visual part of it. Yeah. And then I started, um, okay, maybe I should actually go a little bit into this kind of uh, costume and fashion and identity. Uh. So then you were at, um, you were at Central St. Martin's in London. Um, and were, with, I mean, you, were you considered an older student at the time or you were coming in? Uh... I was sure older than the British students because um, uh, the overseas students are normally applying much uh, later. Uh, um, in, the, in the British system, uh, maybe it's the same in the American. Uh, when you start off on the university, the creative ones, you are maybe 18, 19. For a Scandinavian uh, way of going to university, you would first uh, maybe go on a, uh, maybe you would first work in a kindergarten for half a year, earn some money. Then you would maybe go and do uh, travel the world for three months, uh, explore new cultures. And then maybe in the end, you would go to a foundation school for something. And then you would maybe be 24 when you apply a university or academy. That was kind of the, that's the Scandi way of before you start university. In the British way, you would start straight up. And that was a very, I mean, obviously that's a very exciting time in, in uh, kind of British music and popular culture, yeah. and fashion. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your success at uh, St. Martin. Uh, but it was, um, I applied St. Martin's because of a girl. Um, because I met this girl at a kind of a techno party and she was like, yeah, St. Martin, she was applying and I was like, just trying to be cool. So I said like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm also applying in a, in a, maybe in a lead for a conversation. And that conversation le actually led to that I actually was applying and I got in and suddenly I was in London there um, feeling a little bit, you know, um, it's a big city coming from, from, from here, from Scandinavia. London, uh, I felt a bit like I was drowning probably. Oh. Uh, the band, uh, we had a record a contract. Uh, they joined, but the band slowly split up then in, in London. So um, it was um, suddenly yeah. the St. Martin thing and the first two, three years I was not really I was not really comfy until I suddenly did one project at St. Martin's, which were kind of a, a blown up suit that looked like an egg. An inflatable suit. A inflatable uh, egg suit. Right. <laughs> right. And suddenly the teachers was clapping and my schoolmates were like, hey, Henry, great, man. It was so and suddenly I was like... Um, feeling a bit uh, more self-confidence and, 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 and feeling it. And I met some people down at the St. Martin's Library. Oh, you the guy with that? And like, yeah. <laughs> I was, feeling, I was uh, feeling it slowly. I mean, and, St. Martin's is very much known as the experimental school, right? In, in the UK, it's the school that... Uh, yeah, but it is. But you, Queen, uh, for example, all of these great designers came out of St. Martin. So um, you're also a little bit on your own. You know, it's 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 a school system where you have to choose every second week, hmm. and um, you it's very you could say self study a method that you really have to push it yourself. 
Mm-hmm. And for a guy like me, um, I need like a pistol kind of uh, <laughs> to get started. I need a deadline and stuff like, and okay, see you in two weeks. But then I just chilled out. For, I chilled out for one and a half week. And the last three days I was like, fuck. <laughs> that was my normal uh, St. Martin studies like. So, I mean, if we just jump right into uh, uh, Vipscoff at this point um, and, and look at uh, your earliest projects. So we'll, uh, just to give people a sense of now that we have this background story, which I think is really crucial to understanding your work, um, just to give people a sense of what we'll be showing here. Um, it's your 20th year in practice. And uh, we're now going to be looking at the, the beginnings of um, a book in three volumes. Yeah, uh, tell we us a little bit about that. The whole lockdown here. Um, it, we, it started here in March, in in uh, in Denmark, uh, and uh, we were like, "Fuck! What should we?" All projects got postponed to next year, more or less. Exhibition, ballets, do, 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 concerts, everything got postponed, and then. I, we've been actually been talking about, we had a book, but um, that was sold out. And we've been talking about for years, like, okay, we have to do a new book. So that we started on and because of the time and, and it's becoming my 20 years since I graduated St. Martin's, Mm -hmm. uh, it became, uh, it's three books. And today we would look into book two um which uh, i will show a few projects from and and um it's a mix of different projects and what i'm doing and uh, they are in different um, chapters um okay so we, uh, we start with the book and then and then we'll finish um with a, a real treat which will be a a kind of a, a peek into henry cliff scott's um runway yeah show. The most recent runway show so um, the first project here from from the book two here which is not out yet it's coming in three weeks um book one is out but uh, book two is just in the print um it's actually um, you could say starts out with where what kind of got my self-confidence back at st martin's it's a blown up uh, project and it's called uh, popeye dead by a thousand penises yes. and <laughs> uh, I've been doing all kind of projects where humor has been a lot involved and I was working for on a big exhibition for the a solo exhibition at the Finnish uh, Design Museum and they would really like me to do something similar to an older project I did with uh, was called the big wet shiny boobies so Henrik do you want to share your screen um, yeah is it not shared no, I don't think so. Uh, okay. Now? Yeah, now we're seeing it. Uh, so this would uh, this is the um, the blown Popeye dead by a thousand penises, um, and and the Finnish um, museum there um, was referring to hey maybe a. Uh, something with humor, something about uh, the mankind, masculinity. So I thought it could be interesting to do this, you know, the strong man who sure. get, that get kills by his own masculinities. So uh, that became this Popeye uh, figure. And then with a lot of uh, penises uh, that is spiked through him. Uh, f- <laughs> It looked a little. Bit, it looks a little bit more like cigarette, uh, cigarettes or something like that. It, it looks. It looks a little bit like matchsticks or yeah. something. But it was. It was kind of a penis. Yeah. The title. <laughs> the title is super provocative. So that I, if we look at the, the kind of section that we're in, I think you call it anatomy. Um, yeah. I wanna. I wanna ask about the conceptual framing of each of these collections because. They're very humorous, but at the same time, they're critical. Um, and so you're using humor and wit uh, as a form of kind of critique, right? And so I'm, I'm curious about how, when you began thinking about your work this way, you mentioned the, the, the blow up from Central St. Martin's, but yeah. each of the collections has a very interesting title, which is a kind of premise, a, a gateway into the concept. 
yes. that I think expands the, the whole idea of a collection. But um, it, you could say that the themes, um, we like here in the, in the spring, we started, a, what is there as like, a, how can we divide the books into, should we divide it, time divided, should we, or is there like kind of concepts that where I'm looking into, and I've been looking a lot into, you could say the, the human body, yeah. uh, been looking a lot into food and the industry behind food. Uh, so they became different, uh, you know, uh, different um, chapters that suddenly make sense. So we made nine different chapters, and this is mostly about the body. Um, the next project here is was actually uh, done for Museum of Art and Design, uh, Design in New York, uh, MAD, and I was asked to do kind of a, some kind of uh, installation sculpture. So it became this this big weird frame with some um, textile filled with sand so some kind of sand that was and you cut a hole in the bottom of it and the sand was kind of describing time so a little bit like the time glass effect but the and the sand you can see here made a bit of um, made a bit of different structures when it was coming down um, on the on this uh, wood board. So we work with different structures mm. and how the sand and time kind of. Uh, so when did this aspect of your practice begin? Because sometimes there, there appears to be a fashion component, a theatrical component, a sculptural component. Um, when did you begin making these installations? Hmm. It kind of, uh, in the beginning, I was mostly, uh, you could say at St. Martin's, it was very, uh, you could say, uh, fashion and clothing uh, focus and then um, yeah, it's a longer story but I, I ended up doing shows in Paris and I did a few where I was not really feeling so comfy, comfy. and uh, there was a press agency in France like you should do that and that and that and there was a lot of people who was telling me uh, kind of uh, you should do that and you should do that and you should do skinny pants uh, you should do that and la 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 and um, at some point I was maybe uh, slightly fed up and I did this uh, project where I did a massive performance installation mm. with a lot of um, sculptures and that kind of was a game changer for my way of doing presentations and that also uh, led into all kind of other uh, you know um, request us about doing things at museums, installations, and theaters, and costumes. So it took a while for me to kind of find a, a way. Um, so for example, this is, a, uh, is, is also a good um, example. It's called the jaw not piece. Um, did a lot of um, uh, wood faces um, that was, um, it was the whole project was about how we communicate, how we miscommunicate. Yeah. So uh, those uh, faces, it was a bit inspired by some German old school nutcrackers where the mouth could uh, kind of uh, crack, <laughs> crack the nut. So it was the same uh, mechanic system. And you can see there's a lot of strings going down. So under this whole long, long uh, 300, like a long train of uh, wood faces uh, painted, um, there was sitting uh, six, eight uh, assistants sitting, pulling um, 30 strings at the time. And it became this music, um, chaotic uh, uh, percussion instrument. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm wondering because you, you're working in such experimental ways and using other materials and other means to, to tell a story. Cheers. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, uh, um, I guess, why you, you also choose to work in a very traditional way, right? Because Paris is, is the traditional means or platform for the presentation of fashion. So uh, talk a little bit about that, um, that sort of conflict that's happening there. I think it's, uh, I think it's been a, it's been a conflict for me coming, I came from music and I ended up with this fashion 
thing. And then at some point, uh, I felt a little bit like there was a strange balance in it when, when I said I was working in fashion. People, some people were like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." <laughs> kind of a little bit didn't take me uh, like super serious as a creative person. Mm. Uh, so I, th- I think I had a big need and express uh, a big need for to express myself and say, "Hey, I can, I can, I can work with different uh, materials, different medias, different things." And you know, uh, for some people, they they see clothing and 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 fashion for a more a very artificial world where it's just champagne and uh, some bling bling and uh, I don't know. And I kind of need it somehow. Also, it's, it's a big routine working with fashion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also commercial fashion, you know, is, is you, you change a bit, but you, you cannot, you can change a little bit, but it's not like a massive change. A, a cardigan would be a cardigan, but you can do small changes on it. Well, what, and, what's, um, what's great is that your success actually comes through this very hybrid approach, right? an approach that isn't just about fashion, but it's about um, really a much larger narrative. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's really fascinating that fashion has given you the space uh, to make all of these things possible. I'm, I'm also wondering about, um, you know, influences and inspiration. Uh, there's something, if you don't mind me saying so, there's something kind of absurd about some of these projects and I think about Dada and uh, and the Cabaret Voltaire and this kind of relationship to theater when I see your work and I'm, I'm curious if those are were inspirations for you. Mm, not really I try not to uh, I tr- personally I try not to analyze too much what I'm doing mm. because I think that would that would not be um, safe for my not mind and and i think it would uh, spoil more than uh, i think i should just kind of go ahead uh, for me it's just about uh, uh, being as uh, creative and productive as possible uh, just keep on sometimes i feel i'm maybe also a little bit hyper but i feel that i'm i'm wasting my time that i have to you know i'm i'm not here forever i have to express as much as possible and get it out somehow um and um so so for example this whole uh lockdown and 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 the whole situation with the covid19 has been very difficult for me because you know everything i've been doing for the last 40 years has been about you know uh, actually music uh exhibitions but I, everything has been uh, connected to how we socializing and, right. and so it's been super weird for me actually so i've been sitting playing drums alone that was kind of a good uh, getting back to <laughs> safe spot so every morning uh, 8 45 i started playing drums i had maybe a half an hour if i was lucky down in the corner here mm-hmm. and then uh, some of the people came in and then i stopped uh, but take us into a little bit of your process, if you could. I mean, when we, when we look at these images, um, maybe that's a good page to stop on, Henrik. Sorry, page 30, 36. Yeah. Uh, no, up. Oh, sorry, the other way. The other way. A little bit further. Yeah. So, so you know, when we think about this piece, for example, the five o'clock leg alignment, um, your the title is referencing uh, our obsession with sport and and um, uh, kind of wellness, our obsession with trying to kind of be yeah. more than, than we can be or take care of our bodies in an extreme way. Um, but you go from that title into these very sculptural pieces. And so give us a sense of how, how it develops, how these ideas develop. Um, first, uh, it started out a bit, uh, yeah. I, I saw my surroundings going into very extreme uh, sport exercises. Everybody, uh, grandpaps uh, start to run run uh, half marathons. Everybody knows someone who is going uh, extreme and some kind of uh, 
So, you know, it went from a, you could say, elite sports, uh, professional sport to suddenly your, your dad is running a half marathon and, and everybody got obsessed with sport. And in, in extreme ways, so I thought hey, maybe maybe it could be. And the whole studio was super yoga, and, and uh, <laughs> the whole studio suddenly t- every f- uh, five o'clock uh, on Thursdays it's, it went into become a u- yoga studio. It's like hey, fine, um, great. But then I thought hey, maybe could maybe I could give them some challenges that yoga studio. Uh, first of all, the the, t- the yoga teacher who came to the studio, she was a, like a pro uh, dance choreographer. So then she did a yoga teaching on the side. Mm. So what about if she challenged uh, the team, my assistants, with some extreme sized uh, kind of uh, butcher slap, uh, extreme blown up uh, things. So... So um, we were working a bit on, on some different objects and like, hey, what about if they have to do yoga with that thing uh, put on top of them, you know? That's humor, but also a uh, comment to why do we start to be so, uh, you know, that whole uh, controlness uh, mind thing about that you have to run a marathon it also becomes the individual's way of controlling uh, something because the rest of the world is out of control. Uh, you have a very beautiful president at the moment. I think that scared a lot of people. So what can they do? They can't do much, but they can start go extreme and uh, in the, I, I'll run a marathon. You know? No, no, no. And it's true that fashion becomes a kind of armor um, to, to resist uh, you know, what the outside world is throwing at us, right? Like we've talked about um, suits as uh, kind of armor for going out into the world and, and yeah. doing your work. So I going think from- the, the earring here, you could say it was also a little bit about the, you know, you get so many informations in your head and, you know, in this postmodern society and you, uh, you've, I don't know, there's been analyzing on, analytic uh, results on how many images you are flicking through on a day on if you're like a normal person uh, on so many uh, hmm. you how, how much do you see can your brain actually uh, can can you absorb it all or do you start to kind of so I thought it could be interesting to do something a earring that kind of was uh, like a symbol of that you also a little bit uh, blurry in your brain is that is that an antenna or is it is it kind of like a shield? Uh, earring. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the test on it, and uh, you can see here on the models. Then they they got it became a more warrior with uh, with feathers on and stuff like that. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting how you you take those bigger ideas and then they end up being on the one hand this this beautiful installation that's challenging the fashion system, right? Like, what are they there to look at? A performance, um, your interaction with uh, dance, uh, et cetera, the live event, but then also commercial pieces, right? That, that yeah. go up into, yeah. your, uh, into the shops and into the collection, so. Um, Inspiration-wise, actually, this picture is a very good example because some of the inspiration sometimes, you know, inspiration is not something you turn on and off. It sometimes happens at night or uh, sometimes it's also intuitive or um, here with the team that something happens that uh, inspire for the next project. And for this, uh, this show, I think we did a few times, we did it in Paris and here, this picture is from Copenhagen. It's my assistant and the team. It's the yoga team from the studio that became, you could say, professional performers, dancers. And the show starts, they've been training for months and they had to do all kinds of weird things where with the arms and uh, this extreme, uh, not possible yoga. Um, and the show starts, uh, music goes on, it's a bit dark. And, and uh, we had to let all the audience in. There's maybe a thousand people for the show. 
sometimes it takes 45 minutes to to get people in and the performers had to be on stage uh, so they had to lie down and wait until everybody was seated so it took a while and then the show starts Kaboom. music and <laughs> light on. but one of them you can see the one the fold uh, first row one stayed down and uh, the whole show started uh, models coming out but that person which were um, uh, intern uh, see uh, see was having a little nap <laughs> Was was she just scared? I mean, it's a lot to take in, you know, looking at the crowd and the atmosphere and the environment. Had to lie. Anyway, she had to be on the floor for 45 minutes an hour and waiting for everybody to get seated. It was, she was feeling comfy, I think. And then the, the music is pretty loud. And if it's, you know, when the light gets on, it's like, it's not normal light. It's like full. <laughs> it blended. But she, um, but then people also get like, fuck, is there something, you know, did something happen? Uh, you know, uh, mm. uh, maybe she's not breathing. So one of those uh, stupid arm objects had to be used to kind of like knock her. <laughs> and then she woke up, but she had a, but that became, um, so the next theme for the, the, the next project we were working on was of course sleep. How yeah. do we sleep? Do, do everybody sleep? Do we have m nightmares? Is there animals who doesn't sleep? What happens? Uh, uh, eye rabbit, all kind of movements, uh, double vision nightmares, whatever, you know, that has to sleep, uh, related to sleepness. Um, so that became a, a theme for a next collection. So I'm, um, um, yeah, this is a great image. That that next one actually is a great image to to talk about. Yeah, uh, the one at the top. Sorry, <laughs> um, because there is something kind of magical about this this apparent creative process that goes from big idea, which is critical um, and joyful and funny at the same time. It's commercial and so um, I'm wondering you know is this both sides of your brain and 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 your output working or do you have do you have a commercial team that's actually influencing you to make certain pieces um, that then kind of become it's a, it's a team working here uh, uh, people been here for you know, some people has been here for nine ten years uh, so that's I always say we because I'm you know in the beginning it was a one man band but the, now it's more like a yeah. it's a symphony orchestra and and uh, you know, the bookkeeping is also uh, um, the administrator it's you know uh, I, I need help so uh, there's people to help me and it's I'm thankful for for the people who's been here and who has been here and yeah. hopefully future people. so all, all of the uh i mean it's 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 quite interesting also the the textile developments that happen and the and the uh the patterns that you're working with in fashion so all of that is also developed uh, yeah. we, um, we do quite for example this one is is a fabric uh, woven up in france um and um so we do a lot of uh, you know a lot of textiles development nearly mm -hmm. all uh, all textiles been through our you could say process either woven structure um uh, different knitted structures uh, different techniques of embroidery and all kind of things uh, normally i think we for a sorry for a collection we uh, we maybe have like uh, 40 to 50 artworks, uh, small, bigger, uh, small placement uh, artworks, uh, hmm. full scale artworks. Um, Art supplied to the fashion. Yeah, either a print for a tea, a small broderie on a shirt, uh, 
or like a full print, full woven uh, 3D uh, textile like this, mm-hmm. or um, can be knitwear, or um, yeah, many different things. Uh, and also, we we have a sustainable program that because we we work so much with the fabric fabric mills, so we can actually. Uh, through the years now it's a bit easier than it was in the beginning but the last four or five years we've been having a big focus on sustainable so we we can do for example uh, this fabric we can do in a in a mix of organic cotton and a recycled polyester if there's polyester in it Mm. Uh, we work with all our buttons is like made out of uh, nuts with a binder in um, nuts we we try to so nearly at the moment, we can nearly do like on a full main collection. We can nearly, we can near, we, there's a long way to go, but nearly 90% we can, we can make sustainable. Mm. Uh, but there's still a long way to go, you could say, uh, in, in a sustainable perspective of, of doing fashion. Um, that's, that's a weird thing because it was, it's also something that changed from when I was studying at St. Martin's, you know, everything was about expression, uh, silhouettes and la la la, you know, how you, uh, how you, I suppose. Yeah. How you create shapes and forms and silhouettes and uh, very visual identity. And now you could say I'm, I'm the, the, some of the students that I'm a professor for, their only concern is sustainable and the environment hmm. and so you could you could say i'm actually uh, i had to kind of go back some steps and say okay what is it we what are we doing you know uh, suddenly uh, the fashion world uh, the thing i ended up in is strangely enough uh, pretty polluting but can i deal with that no then okay we 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 have to change it if we can yeah and your work's become quite known for these textile experiments and and uh, kind of texture, color, pattern um, as a means of expressing these concepts and these themes. So it's uh, to be working at those different scales, I think, is very interesting. Tell us about this project. What is that uh, um, giant that, one? <laughs> we only had page 56. It's a long way to go if we have to. It's 300 pages. Uh, but that we probably but uh, that's also uh, in the same chapter we're still in the first chapter uh, it's related to uh, the body uh-huh. um, so um, I had a focus on the tongue um, we use it as a, a communicative um, element for us to somehow to shout to talk to to uh, to to make love uh-huh. um, it's also the it's a transport uh, you could say uh, part of our our, our body uh, because it transports the food down mm. drinks down whatever we put in it's kind of getting uh, processed by the tongue then i looked into uh, you know the structure of the tongue uh, it also has the kind of elastic uh, movements uh, um, I went a bit nuts, so I thought I should do a massive tongue as a catwalk. <laughs> so, uh, so it's uh, so the catwalk starts in zero. You just see a, a black um, backdrop, and out of a little uh, little hole uh, within a few, uh, I think it was uh, f- thirty-five seconds, someone comes out, uh, drag a long uh, twenty-five meters long fabric out it's gonna be blown up with a like a and then it became this big long tongue a pink tongue and then inside of it there were some performers this is from inside and they were the cleaner it's a little bit difficult to see oh you can see it here so there were some people coming out on the outside and they had a little broom with them so because the tongue is also the cleaner yeah yeah so, and then a, a lot of uh, fashion with darts and tongue inspired all kind of it's it's an older project but uh, i actually really like the the picture from inside of the tongue was like mm-hmm. like people are just standing in random underwear uh, 
a naked upper body and they are looking out on, but you can't really see that, but outside of this tongue, there's like, a, what, 800 people looking at them? Mm. <laughs> It really speaks to the different scales that you're working at and the way that performance is connected to fashion uh, in your project. So um, please, you know, share whatever you like. I'd, I'd love for us to get to the, uh, the runway show and then some questions. So yeah, is that... Um, I can also just talk about this project. Then we made it to page 70. Okay. <laughs> and people have to buy the book when it comes out. And That's right. That's right. Uh, but this is also from a fashion collection. It was called the Messy Massage Class. Uh, it was just a little reflection on 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 how we. Um, it's a bit strange how how close we can be together. As you know, if you don't know anyone uh, and you meet a if a fr someone gets very close to you on the street, you feel super frightened or uh, you feel really unsafe but uh, in other um, in other you could setups it's all right that someone who's uh, completely stranger to you get very close to you so the massage room uh, when i'm in new york i quite often go down to a basement down in chinatown and i get a foot massage down there for 20 20 dollars yeah it's yeah kind of, it's <laughs> At the time when I was traveling, that was my jet lag uh, fixer. And I, um, in those um, a, a massage room, you, it's all right suddenly that you pay someone to come and touch you. But at other times, if someone stranger touch you, it's not all right. So I thought if that was a strange, that was a, a thing to some kind of uh, investigate. So I made this um, as a fashion show. I, I made like a massive long uh, massage room. So it was like uh, those latex gloves that we all know, those red ones. They, would, they were filled with foam. And um, down at the end, you can see uh, two people trying to control it. So in the end, it became this 20 meter long massage room with uh, artificial hands. And you can see it looks a little bit like a dead row. But under the pink, the pink, uh, um, what pink sheets? There's a little hole, and there comes the head up. So that was all kind of uh, students from St. Martin's, and there is a microphone out to the side. So the idea, because when you go into the massage rooms, you have also there is also the whole audiative uh, wipe. You, you, you suddenly you hear someone from another room who is saying ah or ow or which is super weird and you don't know who it is because there's curtains. So I thought we needed curtains. So we also need this audiotive moment that, um, that you hear a voice. So in the beginning, uh, the plan was, it's like, okay, we, they could sing something, but that we couldn't manage in the panic. So it became that they should have to say like, ah, ooh, vips go. <laughs> what rhyming? Uh, and um, we did it in Paris and it didn't really work out and then we did a second show in Copenhagen the same setup and there we really planned that it should be uh, ah oh vips go a kind of orchestra yeah. but uh, three minutes before it, the whole thing started uh, my assistant uh, um, my assistant's like Henrik you can't let them say your name. It's like, uh, it's too weird that they, they have to say, ah, oh, Vips go. You have to stop it. You know, I, you <laughs> really can't do it. Please stop it. Then I had, when people, people were still being seated, I had to crawl under all the tables and try to breathe all the performance. Say, hey, let's skip the thing where you say, ah, oh, Vips go. Now you just say, ah, oh, ooh. And people got so, the performers got so confused that half of the people said, e -R -U. and then the rest was like, what did he say? Because in this kind of <laughs> falling under, you know, there was curtain in front of the room, so no one could see me. But suddenly I was under the people like, hey, uh, skip the pl old plan, don't say my name. It's like too much. Uh, it was, this was 10 years this before. <laughs> but, uh, this Incredible. We, I, I think we, um, I think we should skip ahead now to the, uh, to the actual video of the fashion show because that, 
at this point, I know that we all want to see these uh, amazing installations and events um, in action. So, um, how do we, we do? Does Lucy have uh, the video? I believe so. I will stop sharing my um, PDF. Yeah. Um, Lucy, can you? Okay, so this is Paris Fashion Week 2020. Uh, and this is your your most recent fashion show. Is that correct, Lipska or Henry? Yeah. yeah. And is it men's and women's combined? It's a uh, men's fashion week, but normally we started uh, because it's the first one. So uh, I started showing uh, women's combined with it okay. and the uh, unisex and mixed ginger. So just okay. go ahead. Yeah, let's start it, Lucy. Um, the, the whole idea for this collection, that's actually, you could say, the last real show I did. Uh, um, before that was uh, in f end of January, start February, um, and it was based on. Uh, I thought it could be interesting to zoom into the one of the rooms in 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 an apartment, our daily living. So that became the bathroom. Uh, the bathroom is is a very special room. It's also a room where you are. You could say uh, very much alone or maybe the only place where you are left alone. It's also a place where you go in and clean yourself. It's a, it can be a mental preparation room. Um, um, Lucy, we're seeing the cursor on the screen. Can you just move that away? Thank you. Um, so we, we, we did um, kind of a lot of bathtubs with a lot of performers in that was lying in the middle of the catwalk. And they were kind of slowly uh, waking up. And then uh, you can see they are reading newspaper and they are washing themselves. Um, and uh, we have carpets that are, you, you could say, uh, related to kind of old school uh, toilet carpets, the ones that you had in the 70s around that we were looking a lot into tiles from the bathroom. We were looking into all objects from the bathroom, uh, the materials from the bathroom. And this, for example, was like kind of a roses. Uh, we did a photograph of a, a flower bouquet uh, into a steamed mirror to create uh, a lot of different things. It looks very dark, um, the film here. I don't know why. What was happening with the, uh, what's happening here with the headgear, the, 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 the earrings? I guess no, I just thought it looked a little bit like uh, in in some countries you also have this kind of uh, you could say a cup that you use to that's more maybe in a more meditative but in Asia you have this kind of a cup that you kind of put uh, uh, cold water if you've been in a sauna so I thought maybe they could be put like as a and here you can see a bag which is made in leather out of like a sink. <laughs> It goes very fast, though, but um, all and right. These more experimental pieces, are you also selling those? Yeah, here comes the sink again, made in leather. You can see uh, it's like a, a sink with a plug, uh, and it has a tube on the back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it's kind of a mix of uh, a little bit more pricey uh, textiles and also more you could say uh, commercial pieces so yeah hmm. <laughs> and the yeah. idea of like beginning with a film um it reminds me of the uh the project you did i think it was called the the horse uh help me with the title henrik uh, uh, the horsepower takeaway uh, the horsepower takeaway um where you actually produced a documentary to take uh, your viewers behind the scenes of the process. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm wondering, you know, these types of installations and, and I, you've done 40 collections, over 40 collections so far in Paris, uh, men's and women's, it's so much work and, and the installation seems so elaborate. I wonder if uh, given uh, the pandemic and where we're headed in the future, um, do you see film as an alternative uh, for the fashion show? Mm, at the moment, it's the only way uh, we actually can can show our stuff. Uh, that and photos and some live elements. Um, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I 
yeah. And so that the, <laughs> the horsepower takeaway is is a really great video because you you talk about you describe uh, quite a bit the the production process and the and the fabrics and the and the silhouettes, etc. Uh, walk and talk with me. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's, that's a chat going on. Mm -hmm. So the. The Paris Fashion Show is is important because this is where the buyers show up to decide what to buy from the collection. Is that correct? Yeah, it's kind of um, it's 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 the place you are uh, uh, now. Of course, the whole thing is down, uh, which is maybe good for the industry and, and it's a good learning. Uh, but um, it has been like the old school place for showing and networking and selling and buying and press. And it's, it's where you have the whole world. Yeah, yeah. And the critique, I guess, I suppose, is, is that this is just, it's exhausting to put on so many shows a year and, and continue to, to produce um, these big projects. And, and so um, I guess the whole industry is looking for alternatives at the moment. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, it's a great moment to go to questions. Uh, I'm looking at the chat now. Um, if there are any that I missed, Lucy, would you mind sending them down to the bottom? Let's see. Um, we've got Claire Quang. Uh, Claire, are you there? Would you like to ask your question directly to Henrik? Yeah, hi, sure. Um, hi, Henrik. Um, my question is sort of just on the relationship between your um, initial interest in architecture and then when you transition to fashion, it seems like you often take the same like formal idea, um, kind of thinking of your bags filled with sand, um, even the nutcrackers, and you experiment with it as a wearable, but then also later on as an abstract installation. Um, and then I've also seen some of your projects that you do both of the, like with the transparent tongue. Um, so I was wondering if you can kind of describe your just general thought processes um, and any similarities or differences that uh, you might, that might come up when creating forms made to sit on the frame of the body versus forms that um, are meant to be contained within a larger or spatialized or architectural uh, frame? And is there a relationship or um, an interesting dynamic between the two that you've observed? Yeah, I think that uh, there's a relationship, but it's not always that it starts out with the relationship. It can be very different how the process starts. And then later on, hey, maybe it could be interesting to make a long blown up tongue or something that... Uh, <laughs> was kind of the you could say how how do we make this uh, how how do we present this in in so it's not always uh, uh, as a start out point that there is a relationship with another you could say art form but quite often it comes also through the inspiration sometimes it's just that i really like to have many things going like different projects going on and one thing lead to another uh, so uh, the best work form for me is to have uh, 10 different projects running at the same time and then hey what about that form from that project couldn't that be used in this project as well but in a more transparent uh, um, whatever I, I really like to have a have many things going on because when I'm in the in the process a lot of things uh, yeah appears and inspire each other the different art forms and yeah, yeah. So i don't know if it was a very correct uh, straight up answer was it no <laughs> um it looks like uh, we have another question um thank you claire that that uh is similar um from sigrid um sigrid are you there would you like to ask henrik directly hi henrik I try to show my face because we know each other. Hi. 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 <laughs> I, I missed, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. So maybe you had already talked about it. Uh, but 
I had the, I was like more curious than it's really an actual question. I'm quite curious that do all your installations, do they all come from your ideas from the fashion projects or are they, can they be autonomous also? Yeah, they, they go a bit, uh, sometimes they, it starts, it's very different how a project starts, but uh, uh, sometimes it starts with a, with a form or a idea of how to present it. And other times uh, you could say the installation comes at the end. Um, it's not necessarily, um, uh, not, not necessarily combined as a beginning in the process sometimes it just uh, sometimes it's it's like hey could for example for the last one i showed here with the bath tubs i already thought hey could be interesting to have a lot of bath tubs and people sitting uh, dancing uh, slowly uh, reading books uh, be bored in them that i already kind of knew and then the uh, the fashion project was dragged onto it uh, and looked we looked into tiles and do 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 and did the textiles but there's also been other projects which has been based on the color uh, the mint color as as so only focus on a color and just to see what can that lead to yeah and uh, and the mint color um, as an inspiration uh, led to, uh, I think we did a, um, a blown up installation that had a bit of weird, uh, super weird uh, arms of mint uh, colored. Uh, and it, we also did a mint smell that we sprayed all over. So the whole room was like, and then we did a mint drink which were of course with a mint taste and a lot of milk and then a lot of vodka. Huh. Uh, then we did what else did we do we did a mint uh, dance there was a uh, and I did some mint music and there was a guy standing next to me who was doing a, what do you call that uh, when you step with your feet is that called uh, lap dancing lap tap yeah. dance so, so much I'm thinking um, thank you so much Sigrid for that question but as we think about the future of fashion and how we're all um, just so obsessed with content and we're, we're producing so much for to be shared in so many different ways. Um, your approach uh, and the application of fashion to so many different genres, I think is, has a lot of potential, right, for what could be the future of fashion. So that fashion appears not just on the catwalk, but it also appears at the museum. It also appears in the installation. It also appears through a fragrance, and et cetera, et cetera. So just expanding that that notion of, of, you know, where do we encounter these ideas about the body and fashion. Um, I do have one more question, uh, which um, is from a friend who can't be here, uh, curator at the High Museum of Art, Monica of Niski, wanted to ask you, and she's a really big fan of yours, Henrik. Um, she wanted to ask you about your philanthropic projects. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the PIG Foundation and the things you're doing for the future of uh, uh, young creators? Yeah, I am. Um, it's maybe seven, eight years ago. I, I I actually been thinking about it for a while. What can I do to kind of, um, you could say, uh, help new talents? Uh, because I, um, yeah, I've been awarded, but can I give something back? You could say. Uh, of course, I'm 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 a professor on some design schools, and I do a bit of teaching and telling about my 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 history and experience and what I have uh, learned from that. But um, so I I I talked with uh, my lawyer. It's like, hey, can we do some kind of a trust or fund or something? And he was like, you need a lot of money. Okay, uh, <laughs> that that was not uh, possible then. And because also you lock the money and it's only the interest and at the moment you don't get any interest if uh, whatever it was not an option anyway uh, but he said maybe we can do some kind of uh, assessoration where you go out Henrik and you do some work uh, and uh, whatever work you get you you do you get paid for and you donate it yourself your you the money you get to someone else hmm. So that's what uh, the Pick Foundation is. I have to go out and get some money in, 
and I do a talk or I sell some salamis, uh, yeah. I, whatever. I, I try to get some money in. I just bought a salami last night. And you bought a salami last night and people are welcome to do that. Uh, and um, the money goes to a practical, intelligent genius. Uh, the, the, it's called pig, like the pig. My grandma had a pig farm, so I, there's been a lot of things with pigs in general. Uh, but this pig stands for practical, intelligent genius. And um, uh, so there's uh, uh, here, like some months ago, uh, the price went to Hari K from India which actually was the first out of all the winners, which were uh, a fashion designer. Uh, but then it's been um, some performance artists from China, like uh, in product designer from Holland, a painter from Norway. Uh, it's been a weird, strange um, plant artist from uh, Sweden and a textile uh, artist from Belgium and they are all practical and talent genius and you can apply until the 31st of December so there's a few weeks left and you just have to send in a few pictures and write a text about yourself and then the board would look a bit into it and maybe the winner is you yeah and you get a little money prize you get hopefully a travel to to Copenhagen there will be a band playing for you and you will have the possibility of doing a talk. That's what <laughs> the, and I go out and do uh, some work and get some money in. And that's, that's all accessible through Henry Is that right? Yep. Like people. Can, okay. And there's also some, some questions about where they can buy the clothes. That's also on Henry Gripscuff. Yeah, I go in the, okay. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere on the internet. <laughs> somewhere on the internet <laughs> all right all right excellent um so henrik this has been an amazing conversation thank you so much for sharing your work and your vision with us um uh, everyone please go out and buy a salami to support the pig uh foundation <laughs> and uh it's a it's a woven uh salami kind of pillow right I mean, it's yeah. when I say salami. It's a, it's upcycled. It's reused from a. I did a um, installation of three, four thousand uh, textile salamis, and uh, now they have such a good um, uh, purpose. You can actually you support new talents by. I just sell them, and then the money goes to to practical antennas and genius. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, hey, thank you so much. Um, wishing you the best all this holiday season. Uh, and uh, let's continue to be in touch. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. This has been Design and Dialogue. Thanks. Right. Thank you. <laughs>